think it's a, it is a bigger jump than you think it is actually. It's not just you know a step up. It's a big, massive step up, if you'd say. Uh, it is all about managing those risks, identifying what those risks are. And yes, property is not without risks, but it's about managing those risks. In property development, you have to spend some money, a burn money as they call it, because you need to mitigate or manage those risks up front before you go into a site, because there's so many different aspects to it. Uh, I'd say the biggest risks are the risk about obviously the cost, how you're going to manage the cost and if it goes you know, spiraling out of control. And the biggest risk in the land project or building ground up is in the, in the ground, the foundations. So if you do a foundation survey, for example, that you can tell whether it needs piling or it's just a trench, a, a, you know, a foundation. So that each step is along the way. But there's a lot of things up front. You can do like a topographic survey to know where the utility points are, to, um, uh, you know, literally get the experts involved, I'd say, up front, whether that's a planning consultant, an architect, uh, st you know, structural surveyor, get all those professionals engaged in any development projects up front so they can highlight to you what the risks are. Because you would never know each of these risks because you're not, a, a, as a developer, it's very much being a conductor. You're conducting, you know a bit of everything. You're sort of, uh, you know, jack, not jack of all trades, but you're sort of the project manager, as it were. You get everyone together, you get the team together and you make it happen. Um, so you're not going to know necessarily too much detail in any one aspect of it. And at least that's the way I work. So I bring in the experts to tell me where the risks are. Um, you know, another big risk I'd say is the contractor going bust. You can never ever, uh, you know, be sure, but you do your due diligence, get a QS involved earlier on in the project. He does his due diligence, you tender out the bill. So I remember on our first development project, I tried to save money and didn't do the tendering uh, through the, the architect offered me a package. I'll do the tendering for you. I, I was like three grand. Oh no, oh no, that's, you know, that's something. And then I regretted that later on because when I couldn't find, that was our very first ground up development and it was very, very hard to find the bank to do, you know, because we were, even though we were HMO landlords and we had done tens of projects on HMOs, it just wasn't uh, a developer as per the bank's definition. So, um, I regretted that. And so now I'm on a project now, which, uh, you know, I've got everybody engaged up front. And yes, you're spending a little bit of extra money, but that's going to save you tens of thousands of pounds later, as I, you know, uh, learned from my very first project. Uh, another very important thing is uh, SIL, only on a very recent project that we've just exchanged on actually yesterday. Uh, up until the day before we were going to exchange contracts, we thought there was no SIL. £41,500 is what we've been given the bill, the SIL bill, which is Community Infrastructure Levy, for those who don't know. And um, we've had to somehow absorb that, or we lose the money that we've you know, spent up front getting to the point of exchange. You lose all your legal funds and all the money that we've spent to this point. So there are risks. If you are, you know, again, your attitude to risks also is a big one. If you are very risk averse on a scale of one to five, one being very, very risk averse to five being, you know, just a massive risk taker. If you're below three, I'd say property development is definitely not for you because you're never going to 100% be able to mitigate every risk. But yes, I would say 90% of the risk can be mitigated. Um, yeah, hope that answers your question. It's a bit long winded way, but uh, I felt there was necessary points that I wanted to mention. Um, I think the only, I'll sort of try and make it short. Prop, when you're doing a buy to let, you're only dealing with a property, an agent, a solicitor, and pretty much that's it in, in, a, in a standard buy to let. When you go into development, it's a whole different ball game. And as Manny has iterated, there are several different people that you're going to be meeting that you would normally never meet as a landlord, uh, as, as Manny's also, or as I said, talked about specifically. Now, with development, I am a big believer. I'm a numbers guy. For those that know me, I, you know, for me, it's all about the numbers. I don't care what we're building. I don't care what it looks like. Whether you're building a shed or you're building Buckingham Palace, it's all about the numbers. So I'm a big believer in reverse engineering. Look at what you're looking to do and reverse engineer, and that will tell you whether something stacks or doesn't stack. And these are the sort of things that you have to do 
typical buy to let or typically what in the, in the industry is called vanilla buy to let you buy a two bedroom flat you do it up you put it on the market it gives you a certain rent you get a certain return it's a very standard cut copy paste model there's not really too much nuances with that as hmos is a slight deviation from that where you get a bit more cash flow but all in all it's the same thing just multiplied a few times more as i said with development comes with you know and, and that transition to answer your question is more about again it's a journey and you have to engage and understand all these various professions that come in and each of them are important as part of the jigsaw puzzle so right from the architect through the structural engineer all these relevant people will have a part to play and you've got to understand and as i said you don't have to it's all about you know getting an understanding and managing how each of those fit in getting the end result and along the way you're going to have challenges development is a bit of a roller coaster you have your good days you have your bad days and then you have your days i wish i'd never started this in the first place and then on top of that you've also got the market trends nobody knows what's going to be happening in the future so you've got to start looking that's why the numbers are very important you know i always believe that with development you've got to be very real you've got to look at the values very very conservatively because that's something you don't development you have you don't have control with rentals and development in, in the buy-to-let market. You've got a pretty good idea about where the rental values are. With development, that can fluctuate and has more, you've got much more um, susceptibility to market forces and in, in the economy. Interest rates going up, economy going down the toilet, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that's the thing you have to bear in mind with development. But once, you've, once you understand how it works, all the nuances and working with the right team, that, that will hopefully, that's once you've got a good team, you can circumvent a lot of those risks. As, as, as I said, Manny mentioned about managing risks and development does have inherently much more risk attached to it. But if managed correctly with the right team, clearly risk and reward. The more risk there is, the bigger the pot of gold at the end of it, which is why people move in that direction. But you've got to do it in a systematic form and you've got to make sure you have the right people around you. And then, then hopefully, like I said, you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. You've got to work out the I said it's all about the numbers. As long as you do that right, hopefully the pot of gold is there waiting for you at the end. And I think another big aspect of development is it's like a black hole. It sucks in a lot of money, capital. You need a lot of money for development. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like a buy to let or a HMO. You put some money in, you might be able to pull some money out or all of it out in, in, in certain cases. Um, and uh, in development, it keeps draining you. And because our model is a build to rent model, it's even harder because you're not selling the property and then recuperating your money. Your equity is in the property, in the asset, which you'll be obviously sweating over a long period of time. But you st nevertheless, you still need capital for the next project and the next project. So I'd say upfront, start working or collaborating with investors, whether it's as a bank of mum and dad or that aunt or uncle or a friend who might have some spare cash earning nothing in the bank, you know, talk to them about it and, you know, obviously build those long-term relationships with investors. I think it's very, very important. I think, um, you know, you can't say enough about that relationship building piece with investors because that's the only thing that will enable you to move on to the next project and so on and so forth. So I'd say it's definitely not for the faint-hearted. Uh, it is very rewarding if you can get it right. Uh, but if you are... A risk averse person, it's definitely not for you.